This episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com, the global's men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the beard market. And we pride ourselves on well, grooming to. ourselves, looking good for the podcast, don't well, we, mate? you know, I'm 43 years old, so, you know, we're on the podcast twice a week. So look good, feel good, train good. Manscaped. You know what? We always say it, iron sharpens iron, and you make me perform better as well. So I need a little trim up from that when we get home as well. It's time to throw away that bulky beard trimmer you've been using for years that has dull blades, 10 useless guard attachments, and a bulky power cord. We were lucky enough to receive the Beard Hedger by Manscaped. So Mace, let's check it out and have a look at it, mate. And remember, you can go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off free shipping when you use the promo code LEVELSPOD at the checkout. Can't lose that. Just like a typical bloke. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's sharp. That is sharp. All the different levels too. I like it. So you don't you need love that. that. You need that. I'm going to get, look, like I said, yeah. I like the greys gray look that I've got going on. You got a bit from the comments if you shave. They're, they're not happy. Yeah, I can't go too far <laughs> down. <laughs> that's why the levels come in really handy. So hold that up oh, again, Mace, because that's 20% off. Plus free international shipping with promo code Levels pod at manscaped.com. This is the Levels Network. I am Justin Hordor, joined by the Triple OG, Widamu Mason. OG, it's round good. one, done and dusted. It's completed now. Round zero into round one. Footy is back. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Like, from what, the first game on Thursday all the way to yesterday's game, the level is just crazy, man. Coming out at round one, usually, just say 10 years ago, probably get to around five or six before you start hitting your straps bro they're coming out of the blocks like it's it's round 10 they've played that many games um high quality football intensity all the way so it was good good good, good weekend actually let's get straight into that mate yeah. like i want to i want to address um if you look at specifically we didn't talk about this last week the manly game but tommy turbo right. uh jake travojevic daily cherry evans none of them played any trials and they looked as sharp as hell and a, a few other players were the same. They might only played 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, Critter played 20 minutes for your Bulldogs. What he I still say? looked good. His fitness looked good. What have I said? It doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Your trial game, especially with the vets and the big dogs. They know, they know how to get to round one. They know the energy. They know the intensity and what needs to be done. So you don't need to trial the guys. You've got to trial the guys that are going for 15, 16, 17 on the roster. Mm. Maybe a couple of positions if you're going for halves. Depends where you are in the competition. But like, Also depends on the team too, yeah, mate. Yeah, depends like on the if team. You've got new like, combinations. You know, the, the Bulldogs, yes. for instance, they need to trial. Yes. You know, a lot of those guys need to trial for their positions, right? But Critter doesn't have to. Yeah. Fox don't have to really trial. Birdo, Kicks, all these sort of guys, that are they're, they're going to be in the team. But the guys that are on the bench, some of the back rowers, you know, like – Current man, all these guys, they had to try because they haven't been at the club before. But when you've got a vet team like 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 Manly, I don't want Turbo going anywhere near a trial game. Yeah. You just train your train the house down. Turbo, you know where you are. DCE, I know I'm pretty sure you know where you are. Yeah. You've been around for a minute, right? Jake Chaboyevich, Jake can play if he wants to play. Because he just wants to bang. He probably needs a little bit of a touch. Some players just want to trial 20, 30 minutes, get me off. Yeah, you probably got to hold Jakey back out of the three. Tommy Turbo, the last thing you need with his injury history is getting injured in a trial. And Chez is what into his 14th, 15th yeah. season. He's trying to prolong his career, not yeah. shorten it. So the less games, the yeah. better. Um, Going to start off a little bit different this year with review. Yeah. On every preview session, I give my tips with our friends, our partners at the tab. So let's get straight into my results. And I've got – accumulated results this year because I'm really going to be hard on myself. And I've got a little system, right, mate? So what I'm going to do- New system? It's a new system. And, it. and it's going to be help me track my results throughout the year. So at the moment, I'm in the green, baby. So if anyone was following me, we're in the green. So the way it works is I'm going to put $10 on every bet. So that's $160 worth of bets every weekend. So that's including- my bets from round zero that okay. we reviewed last week. So I'll run through my bets for those that missed last week for round zero. So I had Manly plus one and a half, tick. I had Luke Brooks anytime, tick. That paid $4. Shit. All right, so, but I missed out on the Broncos, minus four and a half. Obviously, they got done and Ezra Mam didn't score. Then we get into round one. Started really well, mate. We had the Raiders plus seven and a half. We both like the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, they end up winning that game. I had Xavier Savage on the wing. He gets a try off a nice little offload from Albert Hopperwadi to Hudson Young. $2.30 about Xavier Savage on the wing. And I, th I hope he holds on to his spot because I think he's going to be a real X-factor for him. Then I had a rough 
Friday night. The Warriors get done after looking so good starting that harsh, game. I had them minus harsh. four and a half. Rocco Berry didn't get over, but that left edge was much improved on, uh, defensively for the Sharks. A shout out to the Sharks' left edge defense. I don't know why we bet against Melbourne, mate. We Fucking we nearly talked ourselves into it, but I went the Panthers minus five, four and a half, and I went Isaac Tungle, who didn't get over as well. I bounced back against your Bulldogs, though. Eels minus seven and a half, a dollar ninety. Unfortunately, Mos- Mitch Moses did his groin in the first twenty minutes, so I yeah. couldn't get him at any time try scorer. But I finished really strong. Dragons plus six and a half, tick. Tyrell Sloan straight away, ten minutes into the game, no, what tick. Kid. Cowboys, minus six and a half against the Dolphins. Never in doubt. And then Jeremiah and I, the third to cross for the, for the Cowboys. So, Sorry, my, is this all your bets that you put the, on? These are my bets. Genius, you must not mate. be paying, paying <laughs> attention and preview. I don't gamble, man. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a good start, a really good start to start off round zero and round one together. So the outlay. It's genius level. Outlay was $10 per bet. That is $160. I currently have... Two hundred and sixteen fifty in my kitty, and that is a profit of fifty six dollars and fifty cents. Beautiful. So I didn't know they were, they were your bets. Yeah, they're my bets. Well, look, we've done it in the past, and I've yeah. sort of just like thrown them out willy nilly, but yeah. never really. We've never really looked at them to see. I always felt like I was going good, but yeah. now we've actually got some data. I've chucked it down in my Google Sheets, so we'll go over it yeah. to start the show love and it. get ourselves love going. It. Um, if you're listening to the show for the first time and you love my tips, make sure you subscribe. We. Uh, are currently at 21.7 thousand on YouTube and we just keep getting bigger and bigger mates a couple of hundred per week pretty much as always we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season so please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with and if you need free and confidential support call 1-800-858-858 because yeah. mace it's a really good start to the year but it goes it. in ebbs and flows we've got to we've got to stay responsible and always I'm, responsible and I'm just going to keep checking away because I you know, I pride myself. I feel like we've got very good footy IQ. Now we've got some data to show it. Uh, speaking of data, again, let's get back to it. 30,000 on Instagram, boom. TikTok, 53, boom. And if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, make sure you subscribe and leave us a comment. It all helps. We're continuing, continuing to drive the show and get the support. At the moment, mate, everyone's loving their footy. The numbers are just pumping at the moment. Speaking of pumping... So our BSC dog of the week, you're up first, mate. Who right. was yours? My first choice was jo- Joey Tarpano. Yep. Love him. Love what he does, playing back in Newcastle and getting the win up there. Then we get to Friday night and then we see the Sharks against the Warriors. What a performance. And I'm like, they're going to get blown out of the water, right? I thought it was going to be 30-40. First 20 minutes, 80% ball, all that sort of stuff. I was like, they're going to get hammered. Sipper Talakai was an absolute dog. He dog. played like an animal. And I'm not just talking because he's a big physical dude. He took some fucking runs out there when he's busted leg. And like guys that didn't, you know, when you're playing against the Warriors, those play twos, they're coming at you, man. You know what I mean? Massive contact. He wore it all. Yep. He did about, fuck, about five of those coming out of yardage. It That's f- what I respect. Like yeah. That's what I respect. I don't, I don't care. Any, and the soft touches. Um, for the try, getting back off the ground, that second effort, you know what I mean? That's what we we know that big man can do, that he's yeah. capable of. He was – I think he made something like 160 metres, but like about 60 of those metres were just coming off his back fence and copping those hits. The forwards love playing with this guy, and I think the players love playing with him. Specifically, Mace, on a couple of those ones, they were off uh, stop starts where there were decisions oh. to be made. So it was like not only a tough carry – the defensive line for the Warriors was set, set. And, and they went after him. Like yeah. a couple of the players, I think Mitchie Barnett was trying to get a lick on him. Rocco yeah. Berry was, a, you know. He's Everyone a, was teeing off because they were slow play the balls. Yes. Like it was just like, and he, he took the balls. And that, they're, the, they're the toughest runs. When everyone's ready to line you up and you're like, give me the ball. You know what, too? So we, we sort of questioned their edge defense, which was a problem yeah. last year. But similar to Moses Sully, right? We'll talk about Moses mm. Sully a little bit later on. I thought he was outstanding as well. But when Sifa Talakai gets in and runs the ball like this, it can help him defensively, right, yeah. too, mates. Because if you're running and putting the defensive line of Sean Johnson, Rocco Berry, uh, who else was the defender on the – Kurt Capewell was right edge yeah. defence. What you do is you tire them out so yeah. then they can't come back at you. Yeah, because he's a, he's a bulldozer, man. He's fucking so hard Shout to Shout out to Nico Hines as well. Yep. You know what I mean? Like I, I was sort of questioning. I said, look, he's going to get a lot of traffic coming his way. I love – Great players like himself who he got questioned, like his defense got questioned, right? So we even did ourselves doing? on him. We did. I was, I was like, they're going to come at him because I know when they game plan, they game plan for him to try and tire him out in defense 
and he and he made a few mistakes last year. Mm. He's been in the lab and he's been working his ass off defensively, and I respect the fuck out of that. They went at him. They, oh, they went at him and, and he three, fucking four times. He, like he 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 made some big big plays. Yeah, forced with, a couple Jackson of Ford, Jackson Ford, I think it was. I think it was 12 nil. I think it was Nikora or him yep. who tackled him just before the line. If it would have been 18 nil, I reckon it would have been game over. Yeah, I agree. And the game changed from then. But we'll get to that. But like, I just want to give him a shout out because I was saying they're going to come at him and he, there's no more physical side than the Warriors. Mate, and I he have. Fucking stood up easily. Uh, yeah, 100%. I had my question marks. And look, we can't put everyone in the eight. If I was looking nah. for a team to slip, they were probably going to be my team. And look, they still haven't beaten a top eight team because. At the moment, the Warriors aren't a top eight team, but we probably expect them yeah. to be in the top eight. So a great performance a all around by the Sharks. Gritty win. Um, yeah, a very gritty win. Yeah. And it's the Sharks of old and, and you sort of – that's how you win round one games. You build yeah. into it. And we'll talk a little bit more about it as we get going on. Yeah. Uh, my BSC dog of the week, you can't spell dog without DG. So I'm giving it to my DG, Brycey Cartwright, unfortunately, oh, yeah. against your dogs, mate. The, he was uh, up there with mine, but I just couldn't give it to him. The big pep talk got me all emotion, got me all emotional, got me ready. Uh, but I reckon it pumped up us Parramatta, oh, yeah, fucking the up. Parramatta players as well, because uh, Brycey Cartwright, and I'm so happy for Brycey. Before I even get to the stats, uh, actually, I'll get to the stats and then we'll get talk him, about his journey he after. Deserves, he deserves a rap. He's been through it. 18 carries, 114 meters, 44 post contact, two line breaks, four tackle breaks, six offloads, which is his bread and butter. 22 tackles with only one miss. Now, I wanted to highlight them as well because although it's not a, a massive number, his intent oh. and this part of his game, everyone knows Bryce has got it, everything offensively in the back. I didn't know he could hit like this. He was going after it. He crushed Fox he in got, half. He, he's the one that got Fox yeah, in the right. And he got him clean too. He got penalised for it. It was a clean hit. Clean he hit. didn't deserve to be penalised because it was shoulder, yeah, yeah. shoulder to shoulder contact. They thought Foxy had, must have had something happen to his head. No, but it ended, up, it ended up being the shoulder. So um, two tries obviously, which is grouse. But like I said, Bryce he's always had that in his bag. I think uh, I'm happy for Bryce. He comes in. He hits the scene. He's this – I watched him through his juniors playing against my brother coming through. He was always the dude. Yeah. He was always that guy coming through. Then he hits the scene, kills it straight away for Penrith. The results aren't that great for the Penrith, but he's killing it. Then he signs a big contract, goes up to Titans, Titans. and mm. he sort of just lost his form and confidence yeah. a bit. But now he's come full circle. Last year was a great stepping stone. He started over uh, a couple of really good players um, with Isaiah Papali moving on. And I don't say this lightly, Mace, I think he could be a smoky for New Origin. South Wales. They've been waiting this up, mate. They've been waiting for him to arrive. Yes, they you have. know what I mean. Like he's been that kid for ages. He's just been on a different journey. A couple of years ago, he didn't have a club. Yeah, when he left the Titans. So you got to give this kid some respect, man. He's worked his ass off to get back to where he is now. Now he's starting for one of the premiership favourites. I'm thinking, and he's on that right. Oh, he'd be up there. They're a top four side. They're a contender Talent again. Wise, they're, they're contenders. I want to see them next week against Penrith before, that. I, before I say of anything that. like that. Yeah. Big, big part of it. So good on him. Yeah. So do you, look, it's a, it's a big call. I know he's been in the mix before. He would have just sort of been like the forgotten guy now. Yeah. But I think he'd look good in a 14 jersey as a, as a utility. He's got the talent to play at any level. There's no, no one's ever questioned his talent. Yep. It's just consistency. Yeah. Now he's found consistency. All right, mate. So let's get into our YouTube questions, which are brought to you by Culture Kings. You know, we're always focusing on our culture here. And if you want to level up your fashion game, we have a 10% discount code for you to use online when checking out. What's the code, Mace? L E V E L 1. All Is that capitals. A, all capitals, baby. Let's do it again. L E V E L 1. All and capitals. Make sure you tell your this mates. Culture Kings. This is Culture Kings. Culture Kings, baby. 10% off when you go and check in online. And Lukey. He's got the link in the bio. So go on, get amongst it for Culture Kings. 10% off, baby. Help yourself. Um, so let's get into the YouTube questions. Hey, boys, this one's from Michael Greer. Considering the long season, especially for the star players, do you think it will be common practice for teams to rest their guns like the Roosters did with Teddy last year? So you remember after the origin period, they gave yeah. Teddy a spell. They lose that game to the Melbourne Storm, but then they went on a bit of a run. So, Mace, uh, I'll add some stuff to this. Yeah. We're, we're familiar with the NBA and load management, uh, and we know that – Players arrested generally in the last round of the season, depending on sort of yeah. where they are in the competition. Can they make the finals? Are they going to slide up and down? 
do you think teams will adopt sort of what happened to Teddy or was that more of a specific uh, situation because Teddy yeah. had gone through such a grueling origin period? I think that's the – it's situational, right? Yeah. If you've got a guy like Teddy, if you've got a guy like uh, Kalen Ponga, even Reese Walsh, doesn't matter how old they are, it's the football that they've been playing in the high level, right? So if you've got a chance to rest these guys, you can arrest them. It'd be silly not to. You know what I mean? Especially if you're going to make a big run to the eight and all that kind of stuff. You're going to rest your key players, especially your fullbacks. They cover 15 to 20K a game. They're doing everything. And especially if you go through origin, you make big runs into the finals for years like Teddy has playing, playing for Australia, all these big runs, sort of deserves a rest. Do you think not only the physicality of the situation but more like mentally was a, a big reason that they just needed to give Teddy yeah. a rest well, Look at year? all the shit that he copped too during mm. origin. Like he, they lost origin. Everyone's trying to hang it on him. It's Him and me- Freddie copped all the blame, didn't it's they? A, it's, yeah, it's like, and that's that's great coaching and leadership. But go, all right, Teddy, just have a rest, mate. Yeah, you know, just get away for the week, get out of Sydney, right? It was a must-win game against yeah. the Storm too, and they still managed to yeah. like, they got beaten by the Storm, then they got freshened up, and then he just went on a run. Yeah, look, I think it's it's all situational. It depends where you are. You do it to Turbo. Yeah, you do it to. You know, like Kalen Ponga, all these star players that play a lot of football, they get banged up week in, week out. Yep. You would do it to them. But Age, it depends injury, what history. forwards usually don't want to rest. No. We don't want to rest. No. Just the, the outside backs and some guys, mainly the fullbacks. You want to rest your star fullback. If you've got those guys and you can rest them, rest them. Yeah, they probably cover more ground it's than It's easy when like you've got a guy say. like uh, Joey Manu who can play fullback as well. Yeah, that's it a doesn't nice really, It doesn't really um, hinder anything. Um, all right, mate. I agree with everything that yeah. you just said. Um, we got this one from Puka 1997, Puka. and I got this uh, a couple of times. I stuffed up last week. Scope, you're getting Smithies mixed up with Morgan Knowles from Saints. Both dogs, though. And the even more disrespects, shout out to Morgan Smithies, who was <laughs> outstanding. But remember that team that I gave the shout out to? Yeah. And I mispronounced the uh, – mispronounced the – didn't pronounce yeah. the yeah. name correctly. Um, he's a Siddell Jr. Oh, Siddell. Not Peter Siddell. 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 Not Peter Siddell. No, it is Siddell. It's Siddell. <laughs> Siddell's the p- correct one. So he's a Siddell Jr. Yeah. And he's made for the NRL. And I agree. Oh, Morgan he's a dog. Smithies. Smithies, man. Um, yeah, I remember watching him. I 100% got him mixed up with Morgan Knowles. So apologies. But Where's both Smithies of them, come from? Wigan. Okay. He's a Wigan lad. So they won the comp, him, him and Kai Pierce Paul, who looked really good for Newcastle when he came on as well. Gonna be a problem, that kid. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. That's our first game to break yeah. down. But let's get to a, a couple of the main topics, uh, mate. And uh, it's been reported. We've got the, the Dragons and Lomax situation, which would you would have hoped would have calmed slightly because this news was breaking over the weekend, yeah. basically before the game. Uh, that the Dragons are re- reportedly chasing Wallaby star Jordan Pattaya. But coach Sh- Shane Flanagan has declared he won't be releasing Zach Lomax this season. The 24-year-old centre can play wing or fullback and is off contract at the end of the season. Uh, the Dragons could have an opening in the back line with reports $800,000 centre Lomax wants to leave after being relegated to the wing. But Flanagan declared Lomax, who enjoyed one of the best games of his career, career high too, by the way, in metres gained, uh, won't be going anywhere this year, but by the sounds of it, they're open to discussing next year. So mm. the situation on Lomax specifically, and uh, I don't know much about Wallaby star Jordan Pattaya. I haven't seen too much of him personally, but – He's a winger, isn't he? Yeah, he's a winger. Like, yeah. He's a bit of a hybrid. Like yeah. A lot of the outside backs in, in rugby union are, are yeah, very versatile where they can yeah. play multiple positions, but – yeah, let's go specifically on on the Lomax situation because I've got a take on it and I just want to know what your take on, on, mm. on Lomax playing on the wing because I thought he looked really good. I, on don't, the mind, I don't mind it. He looks all right. Looks doesn't look out of place. He getting, he's getting a lot of ball, but it's just not quality ball. It's fucking tough. They're it, tough. They're tough carries, man. Yeah. They need to utilise him more coming from dummy half, especially in the middle of the field. Get him skipping over. Skipping over in the middle because he's got he's got skills like a five eight. Oh, so skip from one edge to the other, or yeah, get him but in just the like get him from dummy half and just like scoot as far as you can into the middle of the field. Have people running into holes and slowing out the back. Yep. Usually on the third tackle, they're all jammed in in, in the numbers line. Yep. you can just have one little pass and boom, you're on the outside of him straight away. Guys like that, he if a winger has a skill set like that, you have got to utilize it. He's tough as hell, right? Him and Bird have got a good combination out there. He's getting all these runs. He's he's going to do everything that you want him to do. Like there's no doubt with his with his talent. He just doesn't want to play fucking wing. Do you probably, think- hard, probably harder than center. You do all these other fucking runs, man. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the role and what he actually does in the role. I think it's the perceived demotion of the role more yeah. than anything. Yeah. But I really think, and I, and I said this, and I'll throw this out to you as well, in this day and age, I don't think the value of the centre and the winger is all that far off. No, it's not that far. In fact, in some teams, I'll throw you a couple of examples. Here's a couple of examples, right? Two of the most improved teams from last year were the, the Knights and the Warriors. If you're looking at the Warriors and Knights, right, and you've got to eliminate, not eliminate, but you have to pick between who you would prioritise from the Warriors and yeah. Knights, would you go Dallin White to Lesniak and Marcelo Montoya or Adam Pompey and yeah. Rocco Berry? And Dom Young. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll and, get to uh, so yeah, I'll get yeah, yeah, exactly. Or I, Dom I, I Young. Look, I look at it like Greg that as Marzu, well. I'm just thinking they're Dane more, Gagai, they're more valuable. Some of those, especially when you look at the Warriors, then the centers. I agree. Easily, yeah. easily, unless you've got a, like a tool vase, a shack or some absolute gun center, yep. wingers are more important than centers. I in think some in some teams. I think no, I think it's evened out. That's my I, I think obviously, you know, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. We back in, in your era specifically, the game was defended so much differently that you could get at a center some early ball and he could do his more best work. And, man. and then the wingers, they were just finishing stuff off. Yeah. Now the game has changed so much. They relied on yardage plays. And if, if you're on the front foot like the Dragons were, Bright, uh, Lomax ran for 260 or something crazy like that. It's the most metres he's ever run for. Yeah. He can also come off the wing and he started – Any time. At the back end of the halves, he was coming in looking at shape where he got a nice little – he nearly scored another try. Yeah. But I think there was – I'm not too – I'm not 100%. I, f- I felt like there was a bit of a light bulb moment at the end. So he puts in a nice little grubber kick for, for Lomax, Lomax uh, yeah. Benny Hunt, yeah. and, and Lomax scores a nice little try. Um, and then he tried another one when Brimson was at fullback. He comes over and knocks it over. And I think there was – I sort of seen his body language was a little bit still like, oh, I'm frustrated, I'm, mm. I'm capable of more. But he's I think all- at the back end of the game, he's sort of like, I think I can have some joy here. Because he's always been that dude. Yeah. The, 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 the gun center, the Australian schoolboy center, the, this like always you know projected to go into like New South Wales and Australia and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, he's thinking, I'm not a fucking winger. I never played wing. Yep. So it's a little bit of an ego hit. Now he's got to go team first. But have a look how some of the best centers and wingers, how they play. They're getting on play two and three and just smashing it through the middle. Val Holmes, yes. two of us is check. Yep. Mate, you've got a license. When you're down that end, you've got a license to do what you want from both sides. If it's, if it's on, your side of the, on your side of the field, you can fucking get in there and play two or three or four. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Usually he's a forwards ball and play four, but you can get in there. Like It's nothing more dangerous than a big, strong fucking back like Val Holmes. You see Val Holmes yesterday. Yeah, yeah he's That looks awful. If you're a middle and you see a guy coming at you like that, he can b- bull rush you straight through your chest, step you inside and out. Like it's, it's awful as a middle. Like Zach, that- Zach Lomax has that speed and he has, those, he has those skills. So he just needs to find himself and then just deal with it. Well, the, the, Get through this year and then he can do what he wants. Yeah, the, the reason it sort of stands out with those other guys and – and it was a big effort from from Val and Roger. But they still got to be locked in defensively. Like yeah. you've, you've got to concentrate just a little bit harder when you're in the centres because yeah. even if the ball's away from you, it can quickly come back. Whereas on the wing, you can chill. Like defensively, you've got to make big decisions when it matters. But for the most part, you can sit behind the line, read the defence, catch your breath. You're not so really having a red hot crack. Like we, just say coming out of yardage, you're never having a crack at the other side winger, right? Yeah. Until you get down into the red zone, then you got to go. Fuck! All right, crossfield kick. It could be late plays, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you've you got to make to- critical plays. But like when it's fucking when the middles are just bashing each other, you can sit back, have a good minute off. Yeah, you reserve your energy, get yourself yeah. ready, and get ready for attack. And here's another thing. And you mentioned it before. He's been talked about for pretty much since he debuted for Origin. Yeah. I think his path to play in Origin is a lot cleaner. Yeah. Considering what the options are like for his position at centres right now. Well, his fav- favourite position. So if everyone's fit and looking sharp, just like the two fullbacks who started the yeah. competition uh, in round zero, and I'm talking about Tommy Turbo yeah, and Latrell Mitchell, followed by the current incumbent skipper, then for me, those three are locks. Yeah. I don't care how yeah, good Stephen in. Crichton has been for Penrith Panthers and in that series last year. Krita would probably be the next outside of uh, of those two. If, Bess, Katoni. If they were fully fit. Bradman Best was really good last year. Katoni has been really good for the Broncos. He finished the end of the year in the Australian jersey. Remember? So, 
Teddy's fullback, Tommy Turbo's one wing, uh, uh, sorry, one centre, Latrell's the other centre, uh, Brian Toto's a lock for a wing, Fox, for me, isn't a lock for the other wing spot. So Man, it's wide open, eh? Imagine, imagine Tommy Turbo and Zach Lomax on the right edge for New South That'd Wales. Be mad. How physical, be mad. how physical that edge yeah. would be. So, I think there's a part where if he really embraces this, I think I agree. I think Dragons are going to be much improved this year, and I think Lomax could be playing. He could be another Smoky for some Origin this year. If he has those sort of meters, you know, if he if he gets the ball, like forwards love it when the wingers just get the ball and just fucking go at it. Finish tries, do everything like that, but the out of yardage, like get those play twos and threes. And he does that. He's a tough kid. They got the Dolphins this week too, so he gets another good opportunity. Yeah. Val Holmes is did against the Dolphins, come yeah. in, do the exact same thing. That's what I want to see. He's got another 200 metres in him, gets yeah. a try, kicks a few goals. He looks like he wasn't as fatigued kicking his goals too. He's got, <laughs> his percentage went up as well. Um, so, yeah, I – it's a, it's a tricky situation. It's 100%. I can understand the ego of it when you've been that dude for so Damn. long. I really think there's a world in which is he, if he embraces this, the doesn't Dragons look much improved. It doesn't look like he's whinging to me. They're trying to con- create this narrative that he's having a bit of a sook. Well, who knows what's been said you know what I mean? Like, who, who knows? Maybe at the start in preseason he would have been fucking filthy. But now you're playing first grade. You're playing on the wing and you're winning. Well, see, that could change everything, right? If yeah. they continue to win, maybe those – Things, maybe that frustration it, it gets pushed aside a little bit later on, or if they you know they started really well last year, they beat Gold Coast Titans yeah. in round two last year. Everything looked good, but then they lost a few games. So I think it's really important um, the start because defensively, Jack Bird really I thought he was really he was good, good for him Jack. defensively and, and Ben Hunt. All right, mate, staying on rugby union, uh, there is reports of a Joseph Swali backflip. Now, not not from Joseph Swali's camp at all. Of course not. Apparently, this has been the Roosters are trying to push this really bad. So the Roosters are trying to get Joseph Swali out of his four point five million dollar rugby union contract to stay at the club following Joey Manu's impending switch to French rugby. Uh, Neil Breen revealed on Two GB Radio that the Roosters are trying hard behind the scenes to get Swali out of his three year contract. One point five of the best. This. The issue would be whether rugby would be sympathetic to let him out of the deal and they would be because of the size of it and there's all sorts of things about clauses that are Sympathetic. No chance. <laughs> Holy shit. That's never going to happen. No way. You're the biggest young star in the game. And you are fucking getting three years out of him. Because your grassroots are dying and you need a couple of Joseph Suwali's wanting to play union. That's how important it is. They're not looking at him just as a talent. They're looking at him to unearth the next talent. You know what I mean? Because he's a young, good-looking kid. He's that kid that you can hang your hat on, man. Yeah. Like he's a great kid. Like Not only physically you're, you're and not, on the field, he's such a good marketer. On and tool. off the field, mate. Yeah. Like look at him. You know what I mean? Like he's you know, he's a walking billboard. Um, so Union uh, would be so stupid to let him go. There's no but way they do. The Roosters will try everything. If anyone can pull it off, it's Uncle Nick. But it'll be up to him if he wants to stay or not. At yeah, the end of the day, Suli, he wants to go, no, I'm not going. He would dig his heels in, then they'll have to pay compensation and then that'll happen. But I don't think it'll happen. Do you think with the – look, we're all aware of sort of how rugby is being perceived in this country right now. Mm. And I, I've always said I think it's disappointing because just like you, Mace, yeah. I agree. I, I, I love it when a, a Wallabies team yeah. is strong. There's no way that they ever – they'll ever entertain this, right? Like they can't. They can't. You can't. They can't let a, a marketing tool or, or or a player of this caliber because he looked really good in the trials too against – uh, not a, trials, sorry, die round hard, zero against Katani. Unless you're a diehard Wallabies fan. Could you name any Wallabies now? Yeah, no, I can't. Usually you should be able to nearly name the whole 15. Yeah. Not consistently, right? Like I know some guys that have come in like Will Skelton as the skipper and, yeah. and um, uh, Tom Wright who has a rugby league background but – um, no, nah, no, nah, it's it's, and that's sad for rugby union. So they need a Joseph Suwali more than anything. Yeah. So yeah, interesting to see how that plays out. Whether it's just all rumours or not, but let's get in the footy, mate. Let's review them. First game Thursday night: Knights versus Raiders. The Raiders beat them twenty-eight twelve. This game was a true reflection of a team who finished strong last year and expected it all to happen again in a new year. They reminded me, Mace, and I'm speaking of the Knights of the Cowboys of twenty twenty three. Yeah, they try to start twenty twenty three or twenty twenty four. I'm specifically the Knights. 
the way that they finished 2023. Yeah. And it just didn't happen. Mm. You Ooh. played Ricky and you played the Raiders. We said it, right? That's what you're going to get, a real ugly Raiders team who's just going to be non-stop. Fogarty's kicking game, I've never seen a better kicking game in my life. The first one was awful because Ponga caught it in on the full. Mm. All the rest were like 50 out, one metre away from the line. Yeah. Do you know how accurate that is? Or oh, even 60 metres out. He was just putting it on a dime and that's what he, that's what kept Camber in. And they weren't on the front foot either offensively. No, they no. were really struggling out of yardage to begin with. 25 metres or 30 metres, he'd kick it 60 metres out and land it on their 10 in the corner. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I was like, that is ridiculous. And the Ethan, accuracy. And Ethan Strange offensively wasn't doing anything for that first no. 30 minutes too. He was just like, let the OG, yeah. let the let the experienced half go out there and kick. And then he was just concentrating yeah. on make his- Yeah, make, make your tackles. Make and he, tackles. he kicked him to, to victory, I reckon. Yep, I agree. But they toughed it out. That was just typical Canberra. You know what I mean? They go up there with that siege mentality. Ricky Stewart, you see what he had. Fuck him. Yeah. Who has that in their, yeah. <laughs> their dressing room? Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah, as a, as a, Ricky Stewart does. That's, that's who does, Ricky Stewart. You know what? Like even the level of – That is so petty. It's petty. It's simplistic. It looked like he designed it himself. He drew it. It's like he should have got Caesar's Palace or something to at least do something a little bit more creative. He's got his missus to just print this out. It was so <laughs> fucking simple and just like – and he really wanted people yeah. to see it too. Like, you don't put it up in the yeah. locker room and change it. Right where, like the where the camera is, he's going to put it right there. Everyone knows, Mace, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you walk into a shed, you, you sort of yeah. get in, you get changed, and you where's the camera? Because you want to be aware of where the yeah. camera are, like for whatever it They're may everywhere be. everywhere now. You just see where the ca camera is. They've put it on top of someone's locker, specifically right yeah. in front of the camera. Like, I know Ricky Shields' mentality like that, <laughs> and I love it. And it's and it's hilarious how he is. But that's the, that's their mentality. That's their DNA, Canberra. Mm. Fuck him. Everyone hates us. You know what I mean? Like yeah, us I against the world. Like, and he 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 drives that culture with those guys. And you see when they get out there, Danny Levi looks sharp. Dan Danny Levi looks good. He's throwing some darts from Hooker. Let's get to Danny Levi in a bit. I want to start with Tarps and Pops. Yeah, they're, they're animals. Like you mentioned it. Tarpano was nearly your uh, dog of the week, but yep. Josh Papali's first stint was outstanding right. as well. Because I didn't think they were on the front foot, but they just kept on toughing it out, toughing it out. Yeah. And then eventually Newcastle broke. Because Newcastle are tough, right? Mm. They're tough in the middle. They've got the Saifidi brothers. You've got Thompson. I don't think Thompson played enough minutes. Yeah, Thompson looked a little bit off. Yeah. He's, he had a really good last year. I thought he was really good in Daniel the pack played up. a fair bit of time in there, so – but Big Papa come on and just went at it. That yeah. that play when um, I think Starling hit the – was it Ponga? And then Papa come over the top. Yes. Bro, that was – No, that was Marzu. Was it Marzu? Yeah, it was Marzu, wasn't it? Yeah, he caught it and it he's one of, and he, he come at Starling. Yeah. Starling dips and then Big Papa was on that – he was on there for about 25, 30 minutes and then drove him into the end goal. That was one of the big, the pivotal moments in that you know, game. You know what? Like, I remember it specifically, Mace. I think it was about the 18-minute mark and yeah. he'd, he'd front-loaded all his energy. Yeah. Sticks gave him a break just after that. Yeah. Good work, big boy. It. Repeat set. I think they might have got a scrappy try yeah. potentially in and around that time. And they gave the big fella a rest. And they've got really good young um, tearaways that come off the bench. Yeah, That's a Mariota. Yeah, yeah, I, like I like Pasami Solo. Yeah. He, he looked like Newcastle he's really up. Boy. He's a Newcastle boy. Played there for a few years. Um, but Danny Levi, I had my question marks yeah. on him. He's still – there's something still a little bit off for him. Like, he, you know, he scores the nice try. He's got a bit of skill about him. Um, but what about the – before we – we get to uh, the Newcastle Knights. I wanted to speak specifically about a couple of calls in both games. The obstruction call. Danny Levi runs into Tyson Frizzell, fan or not a fan? Which one was that? Sorry. When Caelan made that break through the middle and then he puts oh, Tyson Gamble over, yeah, it, it would have been the first try. What's your thoughts it's on the, the obstruction? Rules. It's the rules. I agree. You know what I mean? Like, have a look how many times they, they break these plays down. Yep. Like there were some great tries. They just they stop them. It's just like because they come back, if you don't go around the guy or if you're getting the ball inside, like inside the lead runner, stop the try. Yeah. So it's just it's just the rules. That's it. And at least they're consistent with it. Yes, that's, that's what I, I love. I don't that, give a shit. Just that's be consistent. what I love. Don't mates. let other plays go and then let this one go. So one thing I don't like about it, and but it's gamesmanship. It's yeah. part of the game. Danny Levi definitely played for it on Tyson Frizzell. But in saying that, I'd prefer like a couple of years ago, it was just too much grey area in it yeah. and it puts too much pressure on the video referees, which we'll get to in the last game. Yeah. One of the worst calls I've ever seen. But um, Hudson Young needs black to watch and white. himself, man. With, yeah, that, with that hit, bro, like come on, he's defensive, defenselessly. Yeah, whatever it is. Yes. Defenseless. Yeah. And you smack him in the head. Like <laughs> just Ricky was complaining Fuck, about mate. it. He felt like he was hard done by. Did Ricky complain about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. He said it was a push. Oh, it was a little bit more than a push, I think. Rick Sticks, respectfully. I think, I think it was a bit more Hudson than a push. Young is the way he is 
Like I'm sure he's got a little bit of dog about him regardless, but you want him to be like yeah. this. And he hit a defensive player late. Spinning backwards you the other what? way. Did you watch it on Channel 9 or KO? Yeah, I, w- no. I watched it on Channel 9, right? And Joey was – even Joey was sticking up for Hudson Young. He goes, played in real time and it's not as bad as you think. Didn't look as bad, no. I disagree. I reckon he had plenty of time. Hudson Young – and I, look, again – He did, but he, he still – like you got, you could push him out of the way, but he didn't push him out of nah, the way. He just shoulder. dropped the shoulder in. He dropped I'm the like, shoulder. Yeah, I get it. You could do that twenty years ago. Joey was saying he was bracing himself. <laughs> Fucking no, he wasn't. He was going after. You could see. Oh, like, I know. When you slow it down, you can see he the intent hit him. Yes. in his face. He was like, move, oh, bang, yeah, and he hit him. And credit to KP because KP's had dramas I in the past. I, right? I was worried about that. I was so like, KP quickly. He, KP doesn't lie down anymore too. Yeah. So even if KP did take a lick, I think he's trained himself now to go get but back for up. Joey to say that watch it in real time. Yeah, you can get it. Out, you can get away with it in real time. Watch yeah. it in slow motion. Yeah. And then you the see intent. him brace and go crack. You can see the intent in his yes. face. Yes. Come yeah. on, man. I love Ricky, but geez, and, and I love Huddy Young. I love the way he plays. Same, but like, same. but he cost your team ten minutes, and nearly could have cost the game. Yep. Because they end up scoring in that play and getting a bit of a front foot. No, 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 no. They. No, Cam- Canberra scored. Canberra, Canberra scored. scored. <laughs> Canberra scored. That was a tactic. So Canberra scored and then they scored one either just before halftime or just yeah, after Fris- halftime. Yeah, because scored. Yes, then Frizzell yes. scored. So That's his edge, but, right? It, it was his yeah, edge. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it was his he, edge. They wouldn't have scored if he was on. Um, I uh, I mentioned it before. Uh, Morgan Smithies, I got it wrong. He's from Wigan, not St. Helens. Um, he's, but, he's built for the NRL. But fuck, Sticky, I heard Sticky speak about it again post-match with, with Joey. Their recruitment out of England is has been second to none. I don't like, know who's their who their dude is. Um, I know, Fuck. I know. Um, Surely we've all got one of those. What the English yeah. guy of an English player? Yeah. I'm, Why are we aren't just dipping like he is? As in going in? Yeah, like, like go just get, get, UK get some players, hardcore yeah. pommies. I've always said it they depends. Fucking rip in. Well. It works really well for the Canberra Raiders for a couple of reasons. One, if you're a young kid over in the UK and you've seen the success of John Bateman, Elliot Whitehead, uh, Josh Hodgson, uh, the list goes Sam on. Burgess. Yeah, but the guys that have played for Canberra and been successful. Okay, right. So they've got a bit of a, a pommies club there. Like Elliot Whitehead's and still it's there. It's cold as fuck there, boys. You'd love it. And that's my point <laughs> is can, – Comparing uh, the north of England to Canberra, it's not, it's exactly the it's same. It's a beautiful summer. It's exactly the same. It's a beautiful summer <laughs> in Canberra compared to the north Just of England. Just joking, Canberra. I love it. Moose heads. Um, and yeah, I think with the respect that in particular Elliot Whitehead's got in the English camp and, and what yeah, he's man. done in the game, so it's it's a little bit easier for the Canberra Raiders to recruit these players. Maybe the whoever goes over and gets a, gets them all done, I come speak to Elliot. Like he'll tell you where to oh, live. He'll tell you how the lifestyle raps. is. Yeah. And the transition's not that hard. So if you get moved to Bondi, a little bit harder. Yeah. Come to Bankstown, a little bit harder. Parramatta out west, you'd be petrified of that joint. Mm. But Canberra, own little town, nice and cold for you. Nice and quiet. Yeah. Um, Ethan Strange uh, filling like, in. Defensively good. Looked really good against Highland looks, Lukey in the trials. Looks, hey, he looks – He's a nugget, yeah, eh? Yeah, like he's not hes not going to get out physical. He, he, get you. he licked Marzu about two or three times and no one licked Marzu gets, last year. Fuck, he's hard to hit Marzu and he got him. He's, <laughs> yeah. a, he's a little baby, went after him. Yeah. I was like, who's this little six? It's that little strange kid. They had, um, do you reckon they had a head on a plate for Marzu? 100%. I know what Ricky's like, mate. Played underneath him and I know which heads are on plates. Yeah. And he'd be one of them. Yeah. KP's would have been one of them. Yeah. One of the Saifidis. Well, I, th- I think KP does his best work off the back of Mazu's platform. Once yeah. they start rolling, like Mazu has that really yeah. big carry first carry we talked about in the yeah. preview, right? Yeah. Kick to Mazu, then yeah. he can't have play two, then they don't build momentum because that's when Bradman Best comes in, that's when Dane Gay guy come in. Yeah. Then they're on the front foot, they're playing fast, and then the shape that they try to get going wasn't off a quick play the ball, yeah. wasn't off a good platform. And it looked choppy. It looked slow. There were passes behind, so they didn't get any and rhythm. Canberra was slowing the ruck down. Real they went grubby, after Marzu, real mate. Grubby shit, but you know, not grubby, but like proper Canberra stuff. Just re- just that one or two, one second in the ruck just means everything on the edge, right? Yep. You can set up for Ponga. You know where he's coming. You can put an extra man on that on that long side because they try and get that six four split. Then you know that that little one second in in the ruck where like Tarpanay's holding you down or Hudson Young's holding you down. It's fucking annoying. Yeah, because you're trying to fight every single second to get that second back, and they're trying to get their second because so everyone can adjust. Then you can get onto Ponga, right? 
we'll get to Ponger in a bit. Just actually straight after this, but I want to give a massive shout out to Canberra. They lose Jared Croker retirement. Jack White and goes to South yeah, Sydney. Shit, I forever, Sebastian, Chris and Corey Horsburgh are suspended and Elliot yeah, Whitehead was injured. Five stars out of their team that are going to be – or three that are going to be part of their team in the coming weeks. Great wing. Yeah. Let's get to KP and the Knights. Are you worried about the Knights after one performance or are you just putting it down to round one? Probably just preparation wasn't, wasn't yeah, up for Yeah, I don't or, know. It's looked a little a few bit – changes as well for them. Their forward pack can go with anyone. Their back – I mean, their combinations on that left side with the young back row. He hasn't played much first grade there. So his time, his time was off a little bit. Lachlan Fitzgibbon was really good from last year too at the back yeah, end of the season, wasn't they, he? They were just game planning for Ponga. Wherever Ponga is, you just put an extra man there because you're not worried about Hastings going down a short side or Gamble on the other side. Wherever mm. wherever he is, you just put an extra man there. That's all it is. And then you've got to put inside pressure on those guys from the middle guys. You can really shut them down because yeah. they don't really have a plan B at the moment because they need Gamble or Hastings to take a fucking line on more and play more direct. You know, instead of going around the back and asking for KP to step over and then play short, all that sort of shit. That happens in a beautiful set, right? You see it, yeah. you see it happen last year all the time. But Gamble or Hastings need to be that genuine option on the other side of the ruck. So if you do flip that other guy over, you fucking attack that short side and you take the ball. Especially early on in the season. Yeah, because man. that beautiful shape that they worked on last year is not going to be in no, the first two or three rounds. All, I'm telling every single team is game planning for that shape. And everyone's fresh and at they this see point the, of the year. Yeah, they see the cues, they know when it happens, and they'll fucking get another man there, and then they'll just they'll inside pressure. They, they, they call it working under the ball. As soon as the ball goes, everyone comes up and they sprint that way. Mm. You know what I mean? Like to try and cover KP's left foot and help their inside, help the four man, help the three man, help the two man. Like all the middles are working that hard. And when you work that hard, KP's not going to really do that much. In saying that, in saying that, and I agree with everything that you just said, they would just to pass off a couple of times. Yeah. I think early on, where if they'd executed it early or maybe played a little bit more simplistic and dropped yeah. a few plays, hit a few leads to begin with. They could have stripped Canberra apart, yeah. but they didn't. Yeah, you can't just so keep credit going to Canberra. out there. You can't yeah. keep going out the back. The first time Gamble hits Frizzell, he goes straight through, right? Like you got to you got to play like chess with these defensive teams. You yes. can't just keep going out the back to Ponga because that's what we expect you to do. They just come through the block play and go straight out to Ponga. That's mm. what they're doing now. Yeah, they're not even caring about the the, the lead guy. Where well, you need to account for the lead guy, and I think. What will change people's minds is Kai Pierce Paul playing on that left edge this oh, yeah. week with that big boy. You have got to account for him because like he's him. big, strong, fast. He can offload. He's got good leg speed. I haven't seen that much of him. I only saw a little bit. Mm. I've fucking seen enough. Yeah, I've seen enough. He's going to be a problem on that left edge he's start, if they right? get if they get the shape right. Mm. You hit him a couple of times. Have KP coming on the inside like Gamble, just pushing up with him, few offloads. Then you can go around the back. Yep. Because then you get the three man looking on, in, looking at him, the four man looking at him. You you got to account for him because one on one's not good enough for that kid. He's he, going to throw you off. He garnered attention yeah. straight away. Didn't he's he? going to get you straight away because he's long, he's big, he's fast, and he fuck, he's got skills, mate. So you got to account for that guy. And then if you get the four man turning in, then you get KP doing whatever KP does. On that left edge, boom, boom, overs, play short, play long, whatever he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Then KP can get into the game. He, he's yeah. he's definitely going to add something to it. My, I, I can see this becoming, and, and we sort of address this. I think there are some situations where iron sharpens iron for sure. I think yeah. specifically like middles work, like testing each other, keeping each other accountable. Yeah. Um, when a when a wing is getting in and carrying the ball hard, you want the other winger to sort of come in and and match him. In the halves. I want it more settled. And I think the problem for the Knights that could arise if they don't get a few more wins early, and I said this before, I think the guy that's really going to feel the pressure is is Tyson Gamble because yeah. Jackson Hastings touch, touches the ball so much. KP is the X factor. Um, you said it before, Tyson Gamble puts on that. Like Tyson Gamble could have had a well of a game. If yeah. that try started, right, he goes through, Kalen puts him over, he supports well through the middle, he puts Tyson Frizzell over early. Could have been potentially like yeah. a 12-0 start for the Titans and, and the Knights are looking good. But the game doesn't sort of pan out that way yeah. and Tyson Gamble never really gets the opportunity to get as many opportunities as the other. Because he's not going to get the lion's share. So he has to really ice his moments. And when you've got a guy like Jack Cogger sitting on the bench who's not a nine – by the way, no. His his service out of out of nine wasn't good, and they they yeah, were targeting through Cogger, the middle. Phoenix Crossland, Hastings, and Gamble in one line. Well, n- now you've got it's a fucking small. It's a small. But the problem a lot is of targets there. The problem is Braley's 
most likely going to come back either this week or next week as well. So then there's just an extra person in yeah. this headache for Crossland. He for went at it. He went hard. Oh, right. He went at it. Like he's picked up his defense. He's not a spot player, even though he made 59 tackles. He was banging. He leads the line speed. I'd love to play with that kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's picked up. I love guys like that who he's gone. All right. Well, I'm, I was in the halves my whole career. Now I'm in the hooker. I need to put on a little bit of extra weight so I can hit. And he's done that. Well, they. I put- love it. I love it. They brought Cogger on to play hooker and then when Adam Elliott went off, or potentially they, they swapped him for Adam Elliott, he played lock. So he stayed in the middle and wanted the physical yeah, stuff and, he loves and played it. lock. So, um, yeah, I just think there's going to be a situation some, some here. Something off there, right? Because I think Gamble deserves to be in that 17, right? This, yes. But I don't know where. He'll feel the pressure. Yeah. Like because he's not get, he doesn't so every time he gets the ball they're expecting him to do something either pass the ball to bloody best or or gags or go gags himself right side, hit yep. the, yeah you know what I mean but he plays I don't know he just needs to find a role I think his best role will be off the bench coming mm. on as lock as nine as wherever you want him to go and just put that energy in because mm. he does have that energy. Well, they've got a big game against North Queensland this week. So if they don't get a result early, I think the pressure is going to build for not it's only hard. Uh, those halves, everyone in the everyone in the spine, but Kalen, and because you know who looked really good in the trials was Will Price as well. So there's another yeah. name that's sort of yeah. tossed into all this. So It'd be hard. Um, all right, mate. Let's get to the Waz versus the Sharks. Your body BSC dog of the week was from the Sharks, um, and like I said, yeah, the. The biggest knock on Cronulla is they couldn't be the top eight team, but this is a great start, mate. It's round yeah. one. The Warriors aren't currently in the top eight, but I believe the Warriors are still going to be a top eight team, and this is a great performance by the Sharks. If they can string that first 20 together for about 60 or 70, they're going to blow most teams off. Mm. I just don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I'm like, what did they have, 80% ball in the first 25 minutes or something? Yeah, a couple of a couple of really soft – I love Royce Hunt. A couple yeah. of poor errors from him early yeah. in the game. They're playing a Warriors team that were just – Relentless, mate. They were humming from a big 2023 season. They were pumped for this game. Crowd. They sold out um, both of their trials and they've already sold out, I think, up until round five or yeah. six. So it was up the wires, up the wires, and they got caught up in the moment. <laughs> but they I cannot, fucking I weathered it. I can't believe they lost. Yeah. I'm watching that game going, yeah, 13 plus here for sure. Cronulla's going to be, yeah, they'll, they're going to be tough. I'm thinking no way they're going to win this game. No way. Just no way in the world. But I don't know what happened. I reckon it's that specific moment when Jackson 4 got held up, I reckon it would have been 18-0. I'm not sure if it was Nico or Nikora saved that try. Yep. I reckon it would have been game over. Was maybe Will Kennedy involved in One of them. Well? I don't know, yeah. but it was a ridiculous try and then mm. they ended up getting momentum from that and yep. then getting a, a little try there. And Talakai played outstanding. And he, um, the kid who uh, marked RTS – What's his name? Jesse Ramian. Ramian. Yeah. Oh, my God. What a job on him. But yep. they, they kept giving him the ball. Like, RTS going, it's like it was under 12. It's like, here, have a crack. Like, you're not going to beat Ramian like that. Yeah. They uh, – yeah, it was almost like they had the star player in the under eights and they were That's trying like, to force and get yeah. him the ball too much. And I think if, if it reminds me of – how the Roosters can get in a trap with Joseph Marnie sometimes. Yeah. If the game isn't going well for the Roosters last year specifically, they'd go throw it to go Joey, Joey and go do something, right? And it, that's not how he does his best work. No. Against the Broncos, Joey was unreal because they laid a platform early, both teams fatigued. That's when you throw it to Joey. Yeah. That's when you throw it to Roger. Yeah. When you've built an arm wrestle and everyone's fucking ass is hanging out, that's when they can expose it. But I'll, I'll, I've got a, a couple of stats from – so everyone but Will Kennedy, who I thought was really good as well, yeah, good. in the back five ran for 100 metres. That's massive. And three middles for the Sharks made 40 tackles. So a complete team performance to get to fight themselves yeah. back I out I honestly still can't believe they won. That can just really catapult their start of the year. I think they got the Bulldogs this, this week. Yes, they do. But how they played, like to get out of that, like the 20 minutes would have been a barrage for those middles, right? You're thinking, what the fuck is happening here? Like, you know what I mean? And then you get out of it and then by the 60, 70 minute, you're winning. You, you get to the 60 minute mark and go, uh, we actually we're feel like we're on top of here. Yeah, we're a chance. How like, did that what, happen? What the hell happened? Like <laughs> you, you got 20% of the ball and then you get a bit of the ball back, a few little tries here and there and you're just like, wow, belief starts happening. And then on the other side, like, fuck, these guys won't go away. Mm. They just keep coming and coming and coming. Like you can build your fucking team on that, man. The whole year on that one win. They've got a specific style and play already that I think is evident, and it's evident by the bench. Four middles on the bench, but 
Are you? Are, does it worry you a little bit? I know it worked really well in this game because they yeah, powered you through. Need the, someone who's late in the game they powered through when the Warriors started to fatigue and lose some bodies. The big boys started to carry through in the middle and really did some damage. Do you worry about Sharks not having a plan B, or do you think? Hundred percent, I worry. Do you think they sh- they just stick to what they're good at and just try to bash Le- teams into this? You have three big boys, right? Just one person that can play. Bit of a hybrid. I don't know. I don't know who they've got there, but like they must have someone. They must look at Jack Williams like that. Yeah. The, uh, Where he's so, a middle. So, yeah, so Jack Williams, they think, can probably play edge, centre, like a bit versatile, but m- majority of the time plays middle. Surely, but what about a hooker? Oh, yeah, I suppose you've got McKinnis. Ken, Ken McKinnis. I don't know, it sort of works, doesn't it? Mm. You can sort of, I think with Jack, he can play. I'm with you. I actually, like your initial thoughts, I I think it might worry him against give some me, other give teams. Give me just one person that's a little bit of a hybrid, a bit more pace, you know mm. what I mean? But keep Hazleton, keep Jack and Finucan, like, and, but give me one one other bloke. Yeah. But what's going to happen when Hamlin Uetle comes back? Yes. So That's going to jam it up even more. Oregon, Kafusi and, and Royce Hunt Rudolph. start. And the Dolphs on there on, on the bench as well. Yeah, so Royce Hunt and Rudolph – I mean, sorry, Royce Hunt and Oregon Kafusi started and on the bench was Hazleton, Jack Williams and uh, the Dolph. Yeah. It's Who huge. misses out? Because Braden goes straight back into, I think, even a starting spot. I think Oregon Kafusi will go to the bench. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be hard because mm. he's great. He's a good player. They got some Tough. power though. So, th- like, when you look at some other teams that are a little bit light through the middle, like even Para and Bulldogs, that I like the rotation, but they're they're a light team. Mm. Um, through the middle part of the season, when people start getting fatigued, I think they'll really capitalize with that power. Yeah. But let's get to the Waz, mate. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think? Obviously, it was a great start, building off twenty twenty three. Do you think the f- the f- the tries come too easily for them in the first 15 minutes and they sort of fell into a false sense of security that, like they were going to roll them? That would have had to be the only, only reason. Mm. I just can't see how you can fall off like that. Like to start off like that, the hype around them, everything like that, and they're like, fuck, it's happening. Crowd was pumping. We're the real, we're drums the, are playing. We're the real deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Next we're going to win the comp. Yeah, we're going to smash the comp. We're going to get minor premiership. We're going to get a home semi, all this sort of shit. And then the next minute the Sharks are no. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out the mindset and what happened. Like they just, they just forgot the, the game plan. Things weren't really coming off. Like SJ probably had a bit of a bit of an off game. Like those passes when he gets around the back, all those little moves weren't really happening that that well. Two picky was really good. Do you think they missed chance? Yes, Nickel clocks that on those sweeping I, plays. I thought he was. I thought he was good, but he doesn't have that um, around the back. The ball game. playing out the yeah. back. Yeah, where he does. They nailed that last year. Yeah, yeah. That was the, he was their best player last year. Yeah, he was up there, wasn't he? So yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure they're gonna look at that game and go, ah, oh, fuck. Another problem which could be problematic moving forward as well because he got injured as well. I thought they were really travelling. Egan. Wade Egan. Big they took problem. him off at around the 30-minute mark, brought Lusik on. They just lost all their ro- rhythm Lassie's through the middle in, and they sort of just got ta- attacked through the middle. Yeah, Lusik got a lot of yeah, defence his way as well. And then they realised, tried to bring Wade Egan back on, but then he did his elbow straight yeah. away. So that could be problematic for the Warriors. He's there, but he's, he starts everything around the ruck. Yeah. Like him and uh, Fanul Blake and Barnett have this great combination near the line. So silky, eh? And that is gone. Because yeah. I reckon he's – I'm not sure how long he's out for, but he's, I think he dislocated his elbow. Could be four to six weeks. Didn't look good, yeah. You know, you don't go off like that and, you know, usually you strap it back up, it was hyperextended or something like Luke, that. can you have a look now and see what the update, if there is any on Wade Egan at the moment, why we keep talking? Yeah, he's a gun. They're going to lose him yeah. for a little bit and they'll lose a lot around the ruck. The yeah. creativity that he has around the ruck – because he's really like I thought at the start of the year, like the trial games. I'm like, fuck, he looks sharp. Yeah, he's good. You know what I mean? Like now, it's like you're going to be just getting service from Lusick. Yeah, there's still like, Lusick's a good him. player, but I mean, like he's not Egan. No, you no. lose a fair bit when he goes off. Oh, it's like any team you lose one of your best players. The the person yeah. that comes on is never going to be able to replicate yeah. that. So yeah, I agree. I thought Lusick really. He's a guy that he's a toiler, but like they targeted him for sure. Yeah, and they built momentum through him. Um, I agree. Uh, Jackson Ford. Some really good defensive efforts, but if there was sort of one specific player, uh, th- cut those three errors mm. early when they were just – they had 80% possession and then costly. he turns the ball over twice in the first half and then again in the second half, I think. It's costly, right? Just, it's it's so not costly. about dropping the ball, right? It's where you drop the ball. Mm. When you're in the red zone and you're building pressure and all that kind of stuff, you know how hard it is to get up there in the first place? You know what I mean? Like mm. You finally get up there and then you drop the ball, momentum straight back to Cronulla. 
And that's what made them believe in themselves. Getting yeah. out of fucking, getting out of yardage. Yep, they've dropped it. Get back down there. Get back into the grind, right? Because Cronulla's got that team that you could, they can grind and ball the shit out of you because they're tough dudes. There's nothing better when you're defending three or four tackles and then you force an error and then you go, all right, we've got these guys. They're yeah. not going to break us. Even though they'd broken them a couple of yeah. times previous, you're like, all right, we're back now. We're defending well. Yeah. And, it gave, and it really gave Nico a lot of confidence too. Because it fixed you up. So Fanul Blake scores that try, right? And then you're probably questioning your middle going, oh, shit, that was pre- pretty easy for the first 10 minutes of a game, right? Yeah. Where you're supposed Even to Metcalf. Stiff, yeah, stiffen up your middle and then Metcalf, you know, palms off three blokes. You know, usually your middles would cover that. The edge would cover it. You're looking at those two tries and you're going, there's a problem with Cronulla. Yeah. They fixed it on the run. They fixed it on the on run. On the so run. You've got to give nothing but credit. And that's what a Craig Fitzgibbon coach does. Uh, we mentioned his name before. Uh, we'll talk about it on the way in. I think they the skipper goes off uh, Cam McInnes and it wasn't – his fault at all, but then Jack Williams come on and yeah, he really he really defended well through the middle for But him. his runs were good. He was getting there. He was he was post contact meters and just standing in tackles, finding his front, just little things like that and getting momentum runs. Uh, same question about the Knights. Worried about the Waz or no, they'll bounce no, back? No, not worried at all. Okay. Um, let's move on to the second game of Friday night. We've got the Storm at home against the Panthers. And outside of the premierships, obviously, uh, Bally's got three. Any coaches, any coach who wins premierships for sure, that's the be all and end all. But this record, mate, this round one record is as good of a record as there is in rugby league, I think. It's unbelievable. We were nearly there, weren't we? If Munster played, I think I was going to go Melbourne. Yes. Same, so was I. Yeah, and then they do this like defensively. Like they kept them to obviously zero, but just the efforts that they had. How good? They, how good were they on the edge? They were been slipping up lately. Last year they did. Yeah, I've got to give a lot of credit, to Pappy. I think yeah. it's Pappy. Pappy works his his ass off so hard. Talks very talk well. communication and look. He learned from the best in the game that's probably yeah. ever done it. The reason Melbourne Storm was so great, they had a pretty good coach. They had a pretty good nine and they had a guy called Billy Slater at the back that just always had them positionally ready to go. And what happens then? You can make aggressive decisions on the edge, can't you, Mace? He was making them. Xavier Coates? Yeah, they were coming at you, man. I thought thought that's where they were going to get them on the edges. Mm. On the edges because they were – I mean, Xavier Coates is a gun. But Warbrick's still in his second year. Still still figuring it out. And the centres aren't – you know, like they're not – Household names yet, you know, but like, like Nick Meany played in there. He did mm. a job easily. I like how they put – because Remus Smith has played predominantly right yeah. edge his whole career, but I think maybe because they had uh, Jonah Pezzett on, on the left 5'8", yeah. that they moved Remus Smith over. But Remus Smith looked good on the left. Yeah. Well, he's, like he, a couple of years ago, he was playing for New Zealand, right? Then he gets injured last year, and then it sort of took him a while to get back into it. Now he's back. Yeah. Because he can play, man. Yeah, he can. He's big, strong, fast, good defender, good ball runner. Just needs game time. Like, they were good, man. Melbourne were tough. You know, that fucking Nas. Yeah, no, no Nas. So oh, that was another big reason. I was like, I was 50 50 with Munster, and then I seen that Nas still wasn't even close to being ready to go. So I was like, I've got to take Penrith did considering. Think, did you take this into account? I don't even. We didn't even think of it. Like just the flights coming home from England and No, I didn't. I didn't you just think it's too professional for that? Yes. I was speaking to Rennie yesterday and he goes, That's what he that's why he backed Melbourne. Okay. Because he looked at the flights and like he goes, Maybe they're getting sick of each other. Yeah. Shit like that. He was he's a deep thinker. Yeah. I'm like, maybe they just got beat by a better team. I I think his first point is it's yeah. got some validity. It's one of those things, um, that you don't think about until after, but yeah. Because like, you're over there, for, like it's a 30 hour transit. It's yeah. fucking huge. Yeah, it is a big trip. You're over trip. there for a week, get beat, pissed off. You know what I mean? But come back here, you got a week to prepare. Like, mm-hmm. I know that wouldn't, shouldn't affect Penrith, but might have a little bit to do with it if you're playing against a team like Melbourne who are relentless. I think it's a factor the amount of footy they play, how deep they play, how many players play in the Pacific Championship all the way until the end of the season. Yeah. But last year, no Texas excuse. Toll. They played St. Helens at Penrith in the wet at home, lost, and then they lost round one against the Broncos. So a bit of a theme now. I think they've just been playing a shitload of footy. Yeah. And Takes its toll. And they keep losing players, mate. Yeah, they keep losing star players every year. So just a little bit of an adjustment until they get into the yeah. season. Um, I like the change of Liero to the middle. Yeah. I think he looks like a better middle. And Joe Chan looked good I like Joe Chan. Yeah, I like Joe Chan. Yeah. He's about it. I can tell he's super aggressive. Like if you run him, he's going to hit you. When he runs, he's hard to hit. Like yeah. I like him. He didn't get that many touches, but some of the touches he did get, I'm like, eh, he's, he's got that. Yeah, he's got I, a little bit I of X agree. factor about him and he fucking likes to hit. It was like old his man. old man. His old man fucking loved to hit. Loved well. to hit. 
Um, anything else that we wanted? Oh, yeah, we talked about it in the preview. They kept at it. Remember we said, why don't they target the wingers more? I mean, Taruva had an uncharacteristic yeah. drop straight away in the yardage, but it wasn't really like a planned kick. It was an end over end. Coats. But I thought even though it didn't work early on in the game, they just continued to pepper Taruva and Toto with yeah. these kicks with – when you got wingers that are six foot three, fucking yeah. use them. Keep going and at good it. Good under the high ball. Like they're good. not just like just big, but they're unreal under the high ball. So they just kept that. It was good. Yeah, Coates gets up, he gets that tap back. I I'd say now watching you know how sometimes we have these impressive young yeah. athletes that hit the NRL early, like Xavier Coates and Joseph Swali. Like they play before probably their bodies have developed. Developed. Mm. I think both of those two players now are in the third season plus of NRL. Oh yeah, and I think Coates is well into it. Xavier Coates would be fourth year. Yeah, and I think now they've finally grown into their bodies. Like you know the difference between Xavier Coates in the last couple of years. And he's had a he's few, like a bloke, it's like when he was at Brisbane, right? He was like a little, hesitant. Yeah, but he's like a little kid. But he was, he was six foot four. He was yeah, six foot four. He's yeah. one hundred five kilos. So. You watch the game and you go, he should be running over people. He's 18, 19 yeah, years now old. He is. Now he's 21. Now that like now Joseph's 21. I think Coates might be 22, yeah. 21 as well. Now they've developed. Yeah. Now they feel like they're first grade hardened. And there was a, a clear difference in their physicality, I believe, in the first round. I feel like with Taruva and Toto, right, in the last couple of years, they've never been exploited because of everybody falls in the line with the centers and the three men. They all run up, run block, uh, run the chases off. Yeah. That wasn't working. Mm. Melbourne somehow figured out to get it and isolate them one-on-one, -on -one, which you never do. That's why they get a free run of the ball because the centre sort of stands in position, the, the three-man stands in position. Mm. They all stand in the right position where you don't get a free run of the ball. You get checked a little bit and then Toto gets up there because they're good under the high ball. This game, they got to them. I'll throw and something. And I think because the centres weren't doing their job. Like they, they missed their assignments a couple of times and that's what happened. I think – yeah, I agree. I agree where obviously you've got Stephen Crichton who's really good yes. defensively. at, at Detail. Um, at, uh, at his detail around the game. Yeah. But I think what's helped them too over the years is you get so many – you get limited options to attack Penrith. And just like we talked around about with Penrith, how they can play quite a negative style of footy where they don't want to turn it over. Like teams don't want to turn it over and give anyone seven tackle sets. You really don't want to fucking give Penrith a seven tackle no. set. So teams don't like to gamble on that cross field kick just in case it goes dead. You get yeah, 100%. you only get you know, a few chances to attack Penrith, but Pen Melbourne did it multiple times and they kept on attacking and eventually they got some. But joy they put in. the kicks on a dime. A really good kick, like they were perfect kicks and the and the chases were coming outside in and attacking that way, right? And then just trying to hit it, trying to hit it back, hmm. and they end up getting some luck. Doesn't uh, really happen. It rarely happens because those guys are so good under the ball and the detail in the blocking with Penrith Systems always on point. Yeah, they just miss a couple of assignments and they fucking scored. They'll be they'll, they'll be right. Uh, it's their first uh, time that they've Lukey got this straight after the game. The first time they've been kept to zero. No, it's not. It's a fakey. Lukey's throwing it up. Why did you throw that one? Where did you see that one, Lukey? <laughs> oh, oh, Chat GPT. Chat GPT. You joke. You need to get off chat GPT. That ain't it. <laughs> chat. Uh, that's all right. We fixed it before we got corrected anyway. Um, when, when is it, but like another Oh, it was the storm that kept them to nil. Okay. Um, I'm not too worried about Penrith though. Like we said last year, they lost both uh, corresponding games last year in the World yeah. Cup Challenge in round one. And it's, it's still going to be out as on. dominant, right? They're still going to be top four, but I mean, it's not going to be like last year. They were dominant as hell last year. I Speaking of dominant and the physicality, fuck Taylor May looks like he's going to fill that center Jesus. spot well. That you know, that was the that was the try that they um they had to bring back, wasn't it? Because he was around the back, like with the lead. No, it was Jerome Luai. Just Luai was yeah, but Luai caught the ball on the yep. inside of him. Like this, it's that fucking far, isn't it? it You're was, making a wrong read there. There's no way Jerome Hughes was going to make the no. tackle, and it was Jerome Hughes's fault. Yeah. This one, I don't think Jerome Hughes played up to it. It was just the nature yeah. of being in that position. But there's no way Jerome Hughes was going to make that play, Ever. whether Lindsay Smith was there or not. Ever, but black and white, and I'm yeah, happy for the call. Yeah, I like it. I like it. You Are you happy be, as just well? Be consistent. Yeah. Be consistent. But I looked at that try and went. 
That's just fucking a bad football read. Yeah, I you just got to, you got to, you know. And the coach, I mean, the refs aren't going to do it like that because mm. they're just going to be by the book, right? It's not going to be like, oh, that's a bad read there, because yeah. they don't know what a fucking bad read is. Of course, because then you're going to rely on people that aren't us, who aren't yeah. rugby league people. When you've got maybe eight different opinions from video referees, that some of them might go, "That was a bad read," and others go, "No, nah, like he was impeded," because they don't know. Yeah. So you make it black and white, and it exactly. gets rid of any drama. Yeah. So I'm happy for it to be a no try as well. Um, is this the year that they drop off or <laughs> Penrith? Penrith, as in, I still think they're going to be around the top four, but do you not mind a premiership. You think they come back to the pack yeah. touch? Still top four, maybe fourth, third. Who yep. knows? Okay, they stand like they. they no, Mitch good. Kenny as well. They're good, but their back rolls. They're still like you got still got Liam Martin. I thought he deserved more ball. Uh, no, Scott Sorensen as no, well. Scott Sorensen, I think. Mitch Garner, Kenny. Garner was all right. No, Garner, Kenny, Kenny's a big loss. Kenny's big loss. So especially yeah, when you don't have they could easily win the comp. That's the fucking thing. Oh yeah, it's of course. scary as hell. Yeah. Um, speaking of win the comp, the Eels against your Bulldogs, mate. Uh, the first the first game Next. on Saturday night. Um, I thought both teams were up for it to begin with, mate. But I yeah. think the, the key positions were really the difference. I think Parramatta obviously more settled. A uh, couple of their playmakers made some really classy touches, specifically Dylan Brown was good. Moses yeah. and Dylan Brown, and then Gutho and, and Joey Lussick chipped in all right nicely as well. They got a good team, man. Really good team. Very well balanced. Starting Joe off and Galway, and then Junior Paulo comes on, yeah. who looks fitter than ever and yeah. hungrier than ever. Like Hopgood, fucking Bryce Cartwright, Lane, like Hands, Lussick. Gutho, good strategy. Canicini, fucking jeez. They've got a good team, mate. It's a fair side, let's, man. Let's speak about the rotation specifically because I think this has been a problem. This is, I think, a lot of para fans have worried about this as the season progresses, right? So Reggie and Junior have been required to play big minutes together because they haven't really had that punch off the bench. Yeah. So what they do is they start Joe off and Gale with Reggie. Joe gives you 20 of the best, pumps it out as hard as he can. Then they bring Junior on and then they take Reggie off a little bit later at about the 30-minute mark because yeah. Reggie can play the bigger minutes. And then they go with a lighter pack. They move Jermaine Hopgood up into the front row. Ryan Madison plays a little bit of footy and yeah. I think that's the perfect time to play it too because that's when defences start to get tired yep. and a guy like Ryan Madison can have some joy as well. And they so both I offload really, the ball pretty good. Yeah, I really like that rotation. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're going to be contenders this year. Mm. Like I, was, I wasn't blind to the fact when I said it last week, they're a fucking good team. We just need to be on. You, know? we just, you can't have 30% of the ball in the first half and expect to be – anywhere near a team like Parramatta. If that was a team of like last year, we'd have got 40 put on us. I agree. We just we still fought, you know. The fight was there. To get to 20 to 8 was yeah. a massive effort because it was similar to the Warriors game where I thought the Warriors against the Sharks, the Warriors could have been up by 40. I thought Parramatta could have been up by yeah. at least 30 by half time. Easy, you know. So the fight was there. So they've got stuff to work on this week. Another battle against Cronulla, but we'll review, review that on Thursday. But, you know, the fight was there. You know, sometimes you just get outclassed. Mm. They had a, they've got a good side. They've got a good side. Like Paulo and Reg. Reg come out of the blocks, man. Yeah. He, he was fucking on. pumped a couple of our younger blokes because well, he, like, he should. In the last couple of years, you've ambushed him as well, yeah. the dogs. The dogs have got him a couple of times. Yeah, we've I got think him. It's the Good Friday game when yeah. they've got – do they play Good Friday or Easter Monday? No, I'm not sure. I think I mean, it's Easter last Monday. Couple of years, last couple of years yeah. we've got them and, and it's been at their ground. Yeah. So they've gone, fuck this. We're coming at you 100 miles an hour and, you know, they got us. You know what didn't help too? By the time they'd played, all five underdogs had won from round zero to round one. Yeah, so it's, it's happening again. Yeah, so it gave Brad – it would have given Brad some – extra uh, motivation before the game. Like if Parramatta didn't need it for a round one performance against the Dogs, Brad would have been gone before the game. All these other favourites thought they were fucking king shit. Yeah, look what happened to fucking the Warriors. Look what happened to the fucking Knights. Like Penrith. All, all these teams thought they were the grouse and they get dusted by the yeah, underdogs So make sure you're on. It's um, It sucks, you know what I mean? Like losing, like round one, especially against Parramatta. But, you know, like they, play, they played some pretty good football power. Like they, they played enough football to put nearly 40 on us and we just kept fighting. Uh, I think if Parramatta play like that against most teams, they're very hard to beat regardless. So oh, I thought yeah, they showed some real fight. Some guys are really putting their bodies on the line. Yeah. But it depends yeah. how you look at the game too. Like I've, I've talked to some Bulldogs fans and some ex-Bulldogs players. There's not that much positivity around that game. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, 
I'm always positive about it because I know like how hard those guys train, how well coached they are. But like you'll see, hey, some shows will be coming after the Bulldogs. All right, well, after we'll, give it, give it. Yeah, okay. Wait till you watch tonight, you know, yeah, because okay. like you, people see a different game than what I see. Yeah, okay, sweet. Yeah, All right, so I'm you interested. listen to guys like on 360 and that. I think they'll have a different okay. I'm looking forward to that. on it. Um, we'll see what BA's got to say, and I'll see him when we do the strong dad as well. Hey, uh, shout out to Morgan Harper. He looked all right. Hey, shout out. I'm, I'm happy for him, man. What I did thought- I tell you about Brad? Brad gives these sorts of plays very similar to myself who are you know, sort of journeymen, mid-tier players to you know, sort of trying to find their way. He gives you confidence, mate. He gives these guys like, hey, don't worry about the perception or, or, or what you think you're good at. Keep your game simple. Make your tackles. Get your runs. And you might get a little bit of joy with a fucking nice little first try score of yeah. the game. Or um, he looked sharp. He looked good, mate. Penasini looked good. Yep. So, uh, who's the other kid? The the other winger, Simonson. Simonson. Fuck, he looks strong, man. Mm. Mike Acevedo has got to come back. They got a de- decent sight. Yeah. Gutho looked dangerous. Anyway, uh, let's get into the Bulldogs. Some uh, some more details in the Bulldogs. Um, the left edge showed glimpses at the back end. The try for Stephen Crichton, but. Just took him six minutes took him too to long. get him, yeah. It took too long. Yeah, that's my criticism with that. Yeah. You've got that's that's ba- that basically the the Penrith edge that they Bulldogs get criticized mm. for poaching Penrith players. But when you have an edge, and I know Fox went down in the first 15 minutes and sort of threw it around, but guess what? It's a wing. You got Karaz over there. Yeah. So they moved Karaz from the centers and they moved him to the left wing. Yeah. So their edge was fucking Karaz. Stephen Crichton, Viliami Kikau. And Burton. And I'm putting it down to Burton. Burton needs to fucking get the ball more and go after the game. That's my biggest criticism yeah, of it. I agree. I, I feel like I'm a Matt Burton fan and I'm – you know, because I'm – too, too much talent to have one or two runs. Because I'm associated with you, Mace, I get probably more questions about the Bulldogs yeah. around the area than I do about Parramatta, Manly. Yeah. Everyone wants to talk Bulldogs with me. And I'm always constantly sticking up for Matty Burton. But – it's a make or break season for him, man. He really needs to take it on. He's got no excuses on his left edge. I worry about the platform. I always worry about the platform and the middles. And there no, there are no stars in the middles, which doesn't help as well. But you paid good coin. You've got a good edge back rower, mm. and now you've got the skipper on that side. You've got to find ways to get them the ball earlier. I quicker. agree. Like Burton's the key to that whole side. You know, like he, um, you know, Marnie can throw a thirty meter cutout and hit you on the chest straight on the straight on the ball. Have a couple of runs first. Hit, give kick out. Get him into the game. Give it a critter. You got tough out the back. You got Fox there. You know, you go through the middle a couple of times. I know they had a fair bit of ball, but we still got the ball back. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's not like they had ninety percent of the ball. You know, yeah. like we still got a fair few sets. And like you just got to give kicks the ball early. Ball. You need to get him involved. He just needs to get fitter as the and season yeah, goes on. He's critter, probably got three or four weeks. He needs critter, to get his fitness critter back. needs to get the ball. But Burton needs to run, man. He's six foot three and hundred kilos mm. and can move. He can play, man. I just want him. I want him to run. He's a ball runner. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's it. I mean, our middles can only set a platform. You know, you're only going to do your best against a team like Parramatta. Very aggressive, and we were on the back foot straight away. But we just need to tough it out. That's why you're fucking playing in the front row. You got to tough it out. How Get far those quick is, um, play the balls, man. What's the go with Zane Tedavano? Can he play ASA? Because no, I reckon he'll be. I think he just done his um his PCL in reserve grade. Oh, Poor bugger. What? I think yeah. And I think they're going to put him in pretty soon because he's he's that dude. Yeah, he is. But we just dude. need to like you know just we got ambushed. Yeah, we did. We got. I wouldn't we, say ambushed. Because Parramatta are the better team. We know, but like come out with a lot more energy, right? They mm. fucking got it. They got on the front foot. Like Reg come out and just bang, bang, bang. Like fuck, they were aggressive, mate. They, they were really it. aggressive. Yeah. And we just weren't up to it in the first ten minutes. Didn't get blown off the field, but we just couldn't get any field position, right? Mm. It was just one out, yes. one out. Karaz, Blake, Wilson, you know, uh, Fox, kick. Mm. You know what I mean? Just trying to get to the end of the sets, kick, get down there, try and build some pressure. But then they were making too many yards and then they were doing some – or attacking, attacking kicks. kicks. yes. All attacking kicks and they're jamming us down there. So it was hard to get that left edge in, engaged in the game straight away because it was just all coming off the fucking line. Yeah. We shit ball. And then we got good ball and then we could go left a little bit. But, you know, you just got to take your licks in the middle and just got to deal with it. So considering all that and, – and look, we're being critical of Burton understandably – when they did get some opportunities, fuck, they scored two tries back yeah. to back. When they finally got some good ball, so I think there are some signs. I'm, I can understand frustration from specifically Bulldogs ex players. I think there are some signs that they're improved from last year, but still, is that going to be enough? We got, I don't know. We got twenty to ten 
with like eight minutes to go against mm. a team who dominated the shit out of us. Mm. It was 20 to 10. Just say if we had a decent crack at him coming out of yardage instead of four fucking dummy half runs and we actually had a, had a crack at him, maybe something could have happened. You know what's disappointing But we just though? didn't. You know what's disappointing? They got back to 20 to 8 but then they still like let another That's what I'm in. saying. Yeah. But I mean like if we had about six minutes to go and we had about the ball three times. We had a decent crack at him coming out of yardage instead of like four dummy half runs. Yeah. Like that's when we need to strike. That's why we've got Critter. That's why we've got Kraz. You're right. That's where – Burton should have got right, into it. Get the ball to these kids, mate. Like yep. get this ball. Like they want they want the ball. Critter and that want the ball in those situations. You can't get the ball one off the ruck and expect this guy to run, make a 90 meter break. Because mm. Parramatta's up for it as well. They go, we can't let this momentum keep going. Because yep. we need to stop this shit right now. Otherwise, they get to 20 to 16 or 20 to 14. Fuck, then we're on for the last five minutes. Yeah, Parra would have been stoked they're playing one off yes. the ruck. You, that's what you want as a mid. If you're playing against a team like they go, fuck, they're doing four dummy half runs? Not four, one off the ruck? Thank God. Yeah. Get the ball back, get down there. There's two minutes off the clock and then you fucking – then they end up scoring a couple of late tries and it fucked the game. Um, it didn't fuck the game, but it like, you know, just – Gave you no chance. Yeah, it yeah. gave you no chance of getting back in the game properly. Uh, Fox was cleared of a broken co- collarbone. Looks like it's a grade two to three AC and potentially could be a month. Uh, what, for an AC? F- I'm not too sure, mate. I'm not too, yeah, that, that's from uh, NRL Physio. So sh- my question is Must be more than an AC. Sherry or Connor Tracy to the centers? Kraz, go straight to the wing. Is, who who comes I'll put, in? I'll put Cherry in, man. Yeah. I mean, Sherry? Connor, Connor hasn't played much football. Did he play on the weekend, New South Wales Cup? Do you know? Maybe. He did play. Lukey, thumbs up. Is that Chad? <laughs> is that Chad GPT? Is that the Chad? No, he watched it. He watched it. Uh, did Sherry look good as well, mate? Hey Dunster. Oh yeah. So Bron- so Luki saying Bronson Sherry looked good in the game. Connor Tracy played in that game. I heard Toby Sexton was pretty solid as well. We well, got some good players in that. They got first graders in reserve grade. It's New South Wales. Come Cup. on. You've, look, it's New South Wales Cup. You've probably got more range of mid tier players. This is probably the difference where you are, like as a squad, where you've got players that are too good for New South Wales Cup, but not up to week in week out uh, NRL standards. So that, that's where the difference is. Um, I'm going to go with Sherry. I'm going with Bronson Sherry as well. I mean, I'm in there. He's got so much to play for. I think Kraz is a much better winger than he is centre as he well. He is, but he's, he's just a dog, isn't he? Like yeah. He got fucking, what, he had like 25 touches. He just keeps going. Yeah. He doesn't stop, but he is a better winger. Um, all right. The last game was Saturday night, the Titans versus the Dragons. Um, trials don't mean much for some, but I think it was important for the Dragons. We've seen signs of it against the Tigers. I think the Dragons are going to surprise a lot of people this I year. think so too. I've seen this. You know, The reason I say that is because – I've seen this style of play before and I've seen Shane Flanagan do this at the Sharks before yeah. and I've played against those Cronulla teams and it's the same DNA. Play tough, simple through the middle, complete, complete high and at the back end of the half. Beat hub, the shit out of you. Get some teams at the end. Like beat the shit out of you. That's yep. what they do. They've got DeBellin, you've got Fatal and Marin on the edge, you've got Jaden Sewer. Do you know what I mean? Like you got some big boys. Mudders Laurie didn't even play. Nah, and that I was worried about it. So once I seen Foz was out, I ended up having a look at the market. Might have had a little lick <laughs> as well once I seen Fozzie was out. But um, when no Blake Laurie, I was like uh, a little bit hesitant. Pull the bet back a little bit. Gamble responsibly, of course. Uh, but <laughs> hey, look good, man. Sloan, X Factor, Sully, massive. Like, Sully's in for a big year. Like Bird, Lomax. You got some old school. Dudes in that team, mate, that bash the shit out of you. And they love playing that style of football. Little looked fucking mad at nine. Yep. Made that great break, just threw the ball to Sloan. He just goes that extra length. It's funny how, like, uh, the performances from other players can just, once things are made simple and you get, you know, you're on the front foot, everyone sort of goes up a yeah. little bit in their rating, you know? Like, you look a little bit sharper. I thought even Flanagan was Flanagan good. Flanagan looked good, mate. Yeah. I messaged him yesterday and I said, I'm just happy for you to be look, – you look happy, mate. Yeah. You know, like he's a good kid. He copped a lot of shit when he was at the dogs. So you look happy, mate. Just, Not just only enjoy, the dogs, roosters, enjoy sharks. Your foot, shit is enjoy your football. Yep. You know, you've got a decent team over there. You're going to get some wins this year. Enjoy your footy and reach your potential. You know, he's a good kid. He's just, you know, he's playing under, under his dad now and he's probably going to get the best out of him because he's just doing a fucking really good job there, squaring upright, you know, like hitting early ball to like Bird, Fatal and Mariner, not overplaying his hand, letting Benny Hunt run the, run the whole show, little run when he wants to, and he scored himself a try, just little dummy, dummy and go. Use everyone you got to account, player? Yeah, you got to account for him. Yeah. He'll fucking run on you if you he, let him go. He's an underrated show and go. Loves it. Yeah. 
Like he's because he's a proper game manager. He's like he's of yeah. the mold of a Chad Townsend and, and yeah. a Jamal Fogarty, but he's probably got a slightly better running game than yeah, people give him credit for. Quicker than you think. Yeah, he is. You know, so when he does square up, you got to account for him. You can't just think he's going to dummy dummy and then just go pass it. And that's what he needs to do. Hitting the logo. That's too. what he needs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sir George for life. <laughs> You know, and I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind what I'm seeing. If they can stay with that same squad all year, which is hard to do. Yep. Everyone played to their potential. They could be a top eight team. Yeah, I worry about their depth. I think you're, you're right. I think they could be not, maybe not make the eight, but they, they're about. They're going to hurt you. They're, they're going to hurt you. Fucking like that. That pack. It's like they have got some men, grown yeah. ass men. You can tell the guys are built. Jack DeBellin. Yeah, like they're not going to fuck around. You know, you see some other teams. Like, look at the Titans. Look like a bunch of kids. Yeah, the they guy did. that looked like Tino. decent was Tino because mm. he's a big boy. Everyone mm. else looked. Fucking mind you. Well, before we get to them in a bit, and I think obviously Foz missing is is huge f- specifically for that team because they just look like they've got no direction at all when he's not on the Do you remember the I said that would make top four? Yeah. No. Yeah. Bottom four. <laughs> I meant bottom four. <laughs> um, before we quickly move off the Dragons, I want to – Sloan, again, good. Fuck him out. Obviously Fuck. the hat trick, but I thought his intent defensively – That's what it is, right? You've got to give these kids – you got to cultivate them. Got to yeah. like you know. Don't just give him so much pressure and like he makes a few little bad decisions in defence last year. Mm. You drop him. You know what I mean? Like you got to put up with him and train him, coach him. Yeah. Like teach him. That's yeah. what coaching is. Like he's got all the fucking weapons in the game. Like he's fast. He's got great skills. He's got offensively. everything. Everything offensively. You can teach him how to tackle. Right. It's his, it's his body positioning. It's his positioning near the line because a lot of teams are doing this. You see. Um, uh, Nanai run that line right they're spotting up the weak ones yeah so if you're standing in the line there and if your markers bite like that guy um, yesterday bit at the nine you hit the guy on that lead run and he goes straight in at your one uh, who was the one Hamaso did they Hamaso, target Hamaso yeah. on that yeah because he comes up and he slides out so Nanai comes outside in bang and real late ball from the nine Josh Kerr was targeting Drinky a fair yeah. bit too and that's what happens right yeah. because you're going to look at those number ones and go okay they're there we talked about it when they go, but their first movements, they've got to be straight off the line. If they come straight off there like that, and if the nine can engage the marker, Game it's fucking try time. Yeah. Because these big boys, trust me, as, a, as an ex-big boy, you're looking for little creases like that, mm. little cues, just going, and you'd be doing, doing video all week with the nine going, okay, here's the cue here, if he's here, certain positions, the fullback's going to go, the A's going to bite. Fucking bang straight in behind the ruck. They're looking for that all the time now. Well, the Titans, that's all they had because their shifts were awful. So yeah. Tino, Tino, uh, who else? Who else started? Mo Fodder, Waker. They were just trying to look, get in behind the ruck yeah. in good ball, and they couldn't get it because Sloan was doing a good job. Yeah. I think Little held up Tino yeah. a couple of times as well. Um, some good performances. That was good. Uh, and yes, yeah, specifically Jaden Sua, who I thought was a beast yeah. uh, with with no Blake Laurie. Um, let's get onto the Titans, mate. Once. Foz was ruled out, even though I was ready on the Dragons. I oh, fuck, I loved it. I got, I had a little bit more on them. Um, Who was the favourite for that game? St George, right? No, Titans were favourites. Were they? Yeah. I got, I got a. In the end, I ended up getting. So I got at the start of the week. I got six and a half about the Dragons because mm. I was on them. I put my bets on at the start of the week, but then I also doubled down and had another little bit on it, f- uh, four and a half, <laughs> because I just thought. Um, I did. Foz is going to be such a big loss because they just look lost without him out there. Like, yeah. I know he's a little bit older now and he and he's been a bit banged up the last couple of years. He had a couple of good years at Manly where he was relatively healthy, but even at the Titans again, when he's not out there, like, like Tanner Boyd must just be the, a good fella because, what, like, I don't know what he offers respectfully, and I don't try to be too critical on players because I was never yeah. really that dude. But if I'm looking at the Titans, it's just like. There's no creativity from him at all. Like it's no. it's just throwing – it's like their game plan for me, and it was the same last year, and I know it's round one and Des will try to work on this, but it feels like their shape in good ball is try to get Tino to barge over. If yeah. that doesn't work, throw it to David Fafita who wasn't there or Jaden Campbell – when he plays, yeah. he does something fucking ridiculous, like takes an intercept yeah. when someone else makes a break for the other team. It's one isn't it? It's like there's no real shape for them ever no. for the Titans. And you know what I think they lack? And I didn't understand this originally in my early in my career. I remember when Willie Tonga got to Parramatta and I, I was, me and him were on the having a few beverages and we are just talking about how the team was struggling. He goes, bro, we don't have any footy IQ in this team. Mm. And that, that's what I feel like the problem with uh, the Gold Coast Titans is yeah. that they don't look like they've got like well, Boyd. A- sorry, like with the IQ, right? I think Boyd is a natural nine. 
Yeah, like, I, think I honestly, honestly don't think he's a seven. Like, yeah. and he seems so lost without Kieran Foran because Kieran Foran knows how to run a team. Yes. And I think they miss Fafita because he's so damaging on that edge. And Tino, you know, like he's a beast, right? But he needs a little bit of help. Yeah. He's there for 10 years. You're going to run him into the ground. The amount of minutes that he's playing, he's, he's only a young kid. He doesn't even care at the moment. He's 23 years old. He's going to run himself playing, into the ground. Yeah, because he's he works dude. so yeah. hard. He doesn't care. Um, yeah, they need someone up there. Is a nine the right position? I mean, like, for, is it Verrills or who will start in that I game? Like I like Randall. Randall hits hard. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the problem's the nine. I think the problem's the the seven and six. And yeah. Look, it's only a short sample size from the Weaver kid. Um, they need to find an answer with Fozzie, I think, in the, whether it's Weaver or it's going to be someone else. But even with the outside backs, like on paper, Cam Pereira, Phil, Sammy, um, Brian hey. Kelly, Brimson, like. They're so talented. It How just, do you get them into the game? It's it's through Foz. Yeah, but it, it's yeah, it's through understanding the games and understanding and picking their moments. And I just don't think individually that they've got to figure. That's why I didn't have the Titans in the eight. I yeah, just, I don't have them nowhere near it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so far off them. I I didn't think they were going to look that bad, hmm. just because of the coach. Yeah, same. That's I, all. I was I was like, Desi's a coach. They're going to look so structured. They're going to look like you know like. Tip, tip, hit the edges, this, that, have a little bit more structure to them. They look like they were that lost. Canberra, uh, Dragons defensively were just so aggressive. They were, I thought they were relaxed. Like they, they weren't under stress at all. No, but they were just like, because it was one out and they could just like, all right, well, Tino's that dude. Let's get three Line in, up. three in, three in. Yeah. Fodawaka, three in. Yep. Then you're not really worried about that much else. Yeah, I'm with I don't know. It looks, it looks worrying. Round one, uh, I think the Titans play the Tigers this week. So an opportunity to bounce yeah. back potentially. Let me have a look. Let me have – no, the Raiders play the Tigers. The Titans play the buy, so they should get a win. They'll be all right. <laughs> Got the Marcus. <laughs> um, all right, mate, the last game on Sunday, 4 p.m. The Dolphins uh, were at home at Suncorp to the Cowboys. The Cowboys do an absolute number on the Dolphins. Uh, but I still thought the Cowboys were sloppy. Three errors straight after their first three tries. But Jeez, one, one thing that stood out to me, uh, Mace, is they had a bit of steel about them. So in the last bit couple of, arrogance, of years, I reckon. there was a little bit of arrogance about like scoring in a their good tries. Way, in a good way. Yes, good way. I agree. Bit of swag. It's a like, bit of we, swag. We fucking deserve – so we should have scored. We should be pumping the dog. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was that, that sort of like mindset. Yeah. Score the ball, not, not that much partying and celebrating – Get back next set. Mm. That sort of mentality had that real. Um, it was good. It was impressive, man. It was impressive. Val Holmes, fuck, he ran hard. Like, just takes pressure off like your middles and everything when you've got a back fucking five guy who just comes off the back fence and takes them on as he, hard as just he behind can. the ruck, like yeah, tough carries too. Those ones take a leaf out of his book centers. Mm. Guys like Katoni Staggs, I'd love to see him do that. Katoni was doing that last year. You know, like just it's, he's so hard to tackle. He's that fucking strong with footwork. Against like some A's and B's who are not, you know, like you're, you're fatigued. Mm. What about the other centre, Zach Labor? Looked all right. He looked looked classy. Real. What about the little fake? Little fake flick. I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's yeah. a first. And Hammer fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all what's happening. It's just like that. <laughs> I knew what he was on. Yeah, he was impressive, man. That right side, Nanai, that right side is dangerous as hell. Nanai was outstanding. Oh, Lukey on the other side. It's dangerous. And Fine then Ruben, Ruben coming off in the, the middle. Telmalolo, McLean, Robson. It's a they, fair side, man. They went that good. Um, Tomalolo only played the first 21 minutes. He was put on ice for the rest yeah. of the game. They didn't require him. I think – do you like that? I like that. Yeah, so do I. If you're trying to get 10 years out of him, yep. another four years I suppose, but yep. like – and a peak sort of Talmalolo might be going a little bit plateauing out, mm. but you got to you got to manage him right. Well, you're going to require him in big games. I'm not sure how banged up his body is. If he's fully fit, you know you want to get him at least like 50 minutes. Well, he's been around. Two, did you say 11? 2010. Was, was 2010 was his debut, so he's in his 14th year. They were never going to lose that game. I like it. He's going to be required. Yeah. Specifically, Use him well. They're going. To, he's going to be required around Origin time. So. Yeah. I like that they kept him on ice for the for the rest of the game because the the entire back line, they all ran for over 100 metres. Yeah, they look strong. So did Nanai and Lukey too. But they look strong, you know what I mean? You see some teams that, you know, you're like, you don't question their S and C, but I mean, like, you're like, fuck, what have you been doing all preseason? Yeah. You see teams like Parramatta, they look fucking big and strong and aggressive. The Cowboys play the Knights at home next week, Saturday night. 5.30 too. Ooh, that's going to be yucky. Yeah. Yuck, yuck, yuck. That's going to be yucky. Um, yeah, so many. It's one of those games. There's not too much to break down because the Cowboys were so dominant. Uh, Dolphins think? never really 
You know, never, never. If they're going to win a game, they sort of need a Raiders performance against the Knights. They need to tough it out early, yeah. not leak any points, play through the middle, that sort of performance. Well, they've Otherwise, got a, they've got an OG forward pack, right? Mm. Play to that. I'm not sure if Ray Stone's the answer at 13. Either. I think he's got to come think, off the bench. Yeah. I'd probably start Kenny Bromwich at 13. Yep. Ball play a little bit better. Like, I don't know. Ray Stone, but Ray Stone's defense isn't mad. Like, yeah. you could put him on the back ends of half so we can just cut everyone in half. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you're, not really, you're not oh, really going to start thing. him, you know what I mean? Like, because you've got so many guys like Bromwich and that, that they can ball play as well. Tom Gilbert would be a big loss. Yeah, he's a massive loss. Because he, he's, you got to remember, man, at the start of last year when they were winning games, Tom Gilbert and, and Felice Cafusi were fucking taking Bashing names. everyone. They were taking yeah, names. Yeah, yeah. They started that whole culture off, man. And Tom Gilbert's probably got more at this point of his career because Felice was a really good attacker in his mm. prime, but Felice is getting a little bit older now. Tom Gilbert was really good in attack too. They need him. Mm. He's like, he makes 40, ta- he's like your Luke O'Donnell. Yeah. Just an asshole to play against and just fucking great to play with. Yeah. And he's got that dog in him and he just goes for 80 minutes. He's relentless. That's why he got picked in Origin. He's played yeah. like 30 games, got picked straight away because they know what an Origin player is. Yeah. Him. Yeah, he had a shoulder reco and still played shoulder extra 15 minutes. And ACL. So, you know, he was going to one of the guys. I'll end up, he'll end up probably playing for Australia in a couple of years, I reckon. Uncle Wayne knows about progression and, and filtering young guys even more. But Cody Nicarima, he was great last year. He had a really good season. But they've got to find out if this Katoa kid is it because Sean O'Sullivan ain't it long term as well. In the halves. Must be doing something like, I don't know, look, because he played most of the games last year, Cattell, didn't he? He did, but he got dropped at the back end of the season for Cody and, and Milf, remember, too. Yeah. Milf, Milf played over top. Uh, Wayne knows what he's doing him. with the younger guys, right? Yeah. What is he, 19, 20? He'd be 20, 21, Cattell. Yeah, he's not young anymore. Yeah. I don't know. It's not, they're, they're, they're not the answer, put it that way, in the halves. I agree. So what do you do with him? What do you do with Nick Arima? Nick Arima's got that X factor. Let's put him at seven. I like And I'll put Cattell at six. I, don't, I, I haven't seen enough from Nick Arima over the years to say that he can control the team. Like, uh, I think O'Sullivan's probably the better seven for them. I like Nick Arima in the 14 and he's yeah. versatile and come off the bench. He can play hooker as well. Guitar just needs uh, to probably just keep learning that? how to control games. Mm. That's about it. That's what Wayne's – that's the knock on him. He just needs to learn how to control games and get wins. I just don't think he's got that temperament. I don't think it's that – you know some guys like control a team, like even with – Kyle Flanagan and, and Chad Townsend, for instance. Like, they might, might be limited in other things where, like, physically, even though we said he's pretty yeah. better off the mark than – Cody Nickarim is probably physically better than them at a couple other things, but I think Kyle Flanagan and Chad Townsend have got a lot better IQ and probably communication. It just takes a minute, doesn't it, for mm. halves. You can't just throw them in there and go, control the game for us, mate. Like You, you need 18, to be able to 19, handle it, yeah. you, got, you need about three or four years, five years in the game, like, learning your craft having great senior players around you, teaching you, coaching you, all these little things. And by the time you're 24, 25, you're sort of set. Yeah. I think, I think, I think that's what Wayne's doing. All right. Overreact on round one. We're not going to overreact on round one. No. It's, uh, it's round one. I'm really excited for round two. We'll be back on Thursday previewing, previewing all the games all right. on Thursday. See you then. See you guys.